Let's continue last time's discussion on the Chrono Library. Having clock and duration under our belt, we are ready to discuss next topic, which is time point. Time point is representing a point of time. How do we represent a point of time? Today is April 27th, 2013. Where does the 2013 come from? It means now it is 2013 years from the year when, when Jesus was born. So year zero, the year Jesus was born, is our point of res reference. So in order to represent a time of point, we need a reference point. And in programming world, this time of reference is chosen to be the midnight of January 1st, 1970. According to the Coordinated Universal Time, UTC. This is the epoch of a clock. So a point of time can be represented as a duration in relative to the epoch of clock. Suppose we want to define a time point. What else do we need other than the point of reference? We need a clock such as system clock. Because as I showed you, system clock and the steady clock may might give you different value for the exact same time of point. And we also need a unit of measurement, like millisecond. So what this time point means is it represents a value that, according to the system clock, the elapsed time since epoch in milliseconds. So a time point template class needs two template parameters, a clock and a duration, as we defined over here. And each clock has its own time point definition. System clock time point is a time point of system clock and system clock duration. And steady clock time point is a time point of steady clock and steady clock duration. Now let me show you how the time point can be used. Say I do chrono system clock time point tp equal to chrono system clock now. This will give me the current time of system clock. And then uh, I want to print out the current time of the system clock. See out tp dot time since epoch dot count end. The time since epoch function returns a duration between now and epoch. And let's run the program. So this shows me that it is this number of clock cycles from now since time of epoch. And uh, as I have shown you, my system clock's period is 100 nanoseconds. So it has been this number of 100 nanoseconds since time of epoch. OK, now I want to do tp equal to tp plus seconds 2. Oh, we need a chrono. This will add 2 seconds to the current time of my system clock. And then I print out tp dot time since epoch dot count and run the program. And as you see, it prints out two values for two time points. And the only difference between these two should be two seconds, as you see, between six and eight. 
Now let me do chrono steady clock time point start equal to chrono steady clock now. I'm using steady clock instead of the system clock. See out print some random message. I am bored. And then chrono steady clock time point end equal to chrono steady clock now. Now we have two time points, start and end. So we can get a duration by getting the difference between the two time points. Chrono steady clock duration D equal to end minus start. And I want to check if D is zero. If D equal to zero, and then I'll print out no time elapsed. It could be possible that the printout is so quick that no measurable time has elapsed. However, this won't compile because D is a duration and zero is an integer. So in order to compare if D is equal to zero, I have to do chrono steady clock duration zero. This will compile. And lastly, I want to print out the D. I could print out D count like before. But suppose now I want to print out D in terms of uh, microseconds. Then I can do duration cast microseconds D count. I need chrono. And let's add an uh, uh, end line here. Now let's run the program. So it prints out I'm bored and the duration of D is 1000 microseconds. So this is how you use the time point. And as I said before, when you try to measure a time span, it is better to use steady clock rather than the system clock. So in order to use the chrono library comfortably, these are the three concepts that you need to understand. Clocks, duration, and time point. That's all for today. Feel free to check out the other videos that I have and see you next time.